This is how you create an email template inside Salesforce. Go to your name, setup, email, my templates. Now what you're going to notice is that in the folder, uh, you'll notice that there's um, there will be a few folders that will that you'll have access to, and some of those might be department folders. And you'll notice too that there is my personal and unfiled public email templates. More than likely, unless you've made a mistake, the email templates that you are going to create, unless you're a department head, are going to be under my personal email templates. So click on my personal email templates to select the folder that we want all of your email templates to go under. And then let's click on new template to create a new template. Now you'll notice that there are four options, text, HTML, custom, and then visual force. You will never use visual force. Custom, more than likely you'll never use custom. You're going to stay between text and HTML. Text is, is the equivalent of sending an email from Gmail or from Apple or from Outlook. Um, it looks and feels just like a plain text email. Um, HTML and you'll notice here it says using letterhead. BG, we are going to be creating a, a, a letterhead for human that if you choose to use as option, that letterhead will be included in the email. So HTML using letterhead, this might be good if you are sending out an email to the franchisees, uh, to the partners, um, to opportunities, or to people that are already associated with human. Um, this might be a good option, otherwise you may want to consider using text. So let me show you both real quick. If I choose text and click on next, you'll notice that inside the template I have a few options. I have, and of course up here you can click on view sample template, and this gives you an idea of what an email template should look like when you're done given the you know the merge data that you want to use okay so in the available merge fields we need to think of this in with regard to who are we working with are we working with leads or are we working with accounts so if we're working with leads then we then we need to make sure that when we're selecting our field type that we actually select the lead fields. If we're working with accounts or opportunities, so we've already converted a lead into an opportunity, then we need to be working with contact information, contact, the contact field type, and the opportunity field type. Let me give you examples of both. So here's my email template. I'm going to check available for use. If you cannot find your email, more than likely you did not check available for use. I'm going to name this. This is going to be um, first phone call, okay, I'm going to act as if I am prospecting. So first phone call, I'm not going to never touch the encoding, we're always going to leave the coding as is. And the description is just a quick note for me. This is used for, and in this case, all new leads. Okay, so the subject is, hey, we missed each other. If I wanted to include their first name, I can, and I'll show you how we can do that right now. Given that this is a first phone call and then I'm working with my leads, I'm selected my lead fields, and then underneath the lead fields, I want to select the first name. So I come down here to first name, and you'll notice that in the copy merge field data, I can copy this information, and I can paste it right here, and I can put a comma. This will pull in the lead's first name. So in my email body, I can start there again, or I can even put, in this case, principal, principal last name. And then, of course, you can have all my information here, you know. And if, let's say that I wanted to pull in additional data, such as the amount of traffic and or um, the name of the school, or the name of the school district or any other rel relevant information, I stay in my lead fields because I'm working with leads and I scroll down below custom fields and then in the custom fields I have all this information, school district organization, traffic type of organization. If I want the name of the school, that's under the company name. So remember as you import your data and you create leads, 
wherever that data goes in those fields, it those are the like the fields that you're going to select um, so that you can then pull in that automation into the email um, so that it works when you mass email your list. Now, let's say, for example, we're not working with leads. We're working with an opportunity in that case or, or a franchisee. In that case, we need to be not working in the lead fields because they're no longer a lead. We need to be working in the contact fields. Now, be very careful and mindful that you don't select contract fields. It needs to be contact fields because in the contract fields, you will find the same first name, last name, email, etc. So it needs to be contact fields. And of course, we can come down here and you have um, you have first name, you have email, you have phone, you have all the relevant information that you need. Um, let's say now you want to go and you want to include the name of the school district and you want to include traffic and all those other elements. Well, you're not going to find that in the contact fields because that information is located in the opportunity section. So in the opportunity, when we come down to custom fields, this is where we'll find the number of locations, the name of the school district, the timeline for vending, etc. So that's if you're working with the opportunity. Um, if you're bot or if you're finance and you're working with an account and you're not working in a specific opportunity and you're not concerned with the, those, those details, you will be working in the account fields. So in the account fields, this is where we're going to find all of our um, information with regard to um, how much machines cost, um, what, what, what tier they're in, like how they were grandfathered into human based on when, when they were a partner, when they, like if they became a franchisee a while back. All that information is underneath the account information, the account fields. So as you get moving on this, just keep in mind, wherever you see your data, whether it's under an account or a contact record or an opportunity or a lead, just make sure that you select the appropriate field type. And then, of course, once you build your email and you're done, you can hit save. Now, the good part is, is now you can test and verify the merge fields, and you'll notice principal lead first name. Now, let's say, for example, this doesn't exist. It's just going to leave... It's just going to be blank, and it's just going to leave one space in between principal and, 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 and lead, like where the first name would have been. So it's just going to say principal space comma. So if the information doesn't exist, it's not going to show anything. It's not going to show, you know, exclamation point lead dot first name. So this is a plain text email. Well, let's say you want your email to have a little bit more juice. Let's create an email template. Let's go to HTML now. And in the HTML, here's my folder again. I'm going to do this for my personal email templates unless I'm a department head and want to add them somewhere else. This is available for use. And this is for, um, I'm going to call this my opportunity um, first meeting set email template. The letterhead I'm going to select is humans. That's all we have for right now. And then you'll notice in the email layout, we have a bunch of options. Well, right here, you can choose which option you would like to use. Free form, formal, promotion, newsletter, and then products at the bottom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say select this layout. I can select it there or I can select it through the drop down. Either way works. Again, I'm not touching the encoding. And this is just a quick note for me. Um, first meeting set. And I'm gonna hit next. Now, same thing. You'll notice here are my here's my field type. So my contact fields, my lead fields, account fields, opportunity fields. and But this time you'll notice that I have a few more sections that I can kind of play with. Notice you're not going to be able to adjust the header because this is part of our letterhead that is built in by default. And we'll have this in the next little bit. Um, but you can adjust the content. And you'll notice up top, this is where you can insert images, you can create hyperlinks, you can use bulletins, so you can get a little bit fancier with your font text, and this may be what you're more used to seeing inside Infusionsoft. And then of course you can create your email. Um, and when you hit next, you'll notice that there's a text only format, and so you can literally copy everything over from the HTML version right into the text body. So that'll save you some time and then you hit save and you're done. Now, you can test this 
Um, and if I wanted to check to make sure that these got in, I click on my email templates and here they are. So I have my opportunity for a set, my first phone call. Now moving forward, if you want to adjust the email, click on the email name. And in this case, you're going to edit the HTML version. And this is how you can jump back in and make edits to your email. Let's say, for example, that you can't, you go to mass email your list, but you are having a hard time locating the email template and you know for a fact it was created. Well, if you come back here and this box is not checked, simply click on edit, click on available for use, and hit save. And there you go. Now it's available for use. So this is how you create email templates. Again, you're more than likely going to use text or HTML. Um, Texts typically have a very positive open and response rate. Um, as you get moving on HTML, if you have questions, reach out. Um, and it, yeah, we'll go from there.